Hi Kings, hope you're enjoying the 21 days of prayer. Um, for today's devotion I just want to share with you a few thoughts from Psalm 133, so I'm going to jump straight in, reading from verse 1. There's only three verses, so we'll read it all. It says this, How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down on the collar of his robe. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life evermore. Just to bring a little bit of context to these verses, um, before we move on to some sort of application for prayer, the first verse is really quite self-explanatory because it says, I'll read it again, how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It's really clear that it's just saying that God blesses unity. It's good and pleasant to God when his people live together in unity. The second verse though, probably starts to get a bit weird, a bit odd if you're um, maybe not familiar with certain parts of the Bible that this is in relation to, or maybe you've never really thought about it, but it starts talking about oil and pouring oil on heads and beards and uh, mentions air and well, to give some context to this verse, this is symbolic of the anointing of God. It's symbolic of the anointing of God that was poured over Aaron, that anointed Aaron. So it's saying, um, sort of when God's people live together in unity, it's anointed. It's anointed like the oil that was poured over Aaron's head and ran down his beard. And then it says, it's as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion. Again, a rather random reference, but if we look into this and we sort of get an understanding of what does this mean, what was the Jew of Hermon? Basically, the Jew of Hermon was, um, Hermon was known for its bountiful, abundant amount of dew. So in real sort of simple terms, it's saying that the, when God's people live together in unity, it's blessed, it's good, it's anointed, and it's abundant. And when we read these verses in light of that, we start to get an understanding of how important and special unity is to God and how really valuable and, and important it should be to us, his people, because God's saying, if you live together in unity, then I'll bestow a blessing upon you. It'll be anointed, it'll be abundant, it'll be good, it'll be pleasant. And, you know, if the devil wants to really do one thing among God's people, it's cause disunity because he understands that where there is unity, God is in the center of it and, and there is an incredible anointing, abundance of blessing in that place among those people. So the devil is hell bent on absolutely tearing apart the body of Christ, breaking down relationships any which way he can. So we must be on our guard against that. Um, but also realizing how precious and special it is and what a wonderful thing God can do amongst us when we, as Christians, put Jesus at the center of everything and decide that we want to live in unity and love our brothers and lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters in Christ. So just a couple of things that I think would be really helpful to pray for. And um, the first one that I find a real challenge and I'm sure you will, is to actually pray the prayer where we pray for ourselves and say, God, will you search my heart? God, will you show me if there's anything in me? David says in the Psalms, let me search me, O oh Lord. Show me if there's any wicked way in me. And, and that's a real brave prayer. Um, Craig Rochelle does a great series called Dangerous Prayers. And one of his dangerous prayers is search me. And it's because what you're doing is you're saying, Holy Spirit, would you reveal to me if there's anything in me that is a, is a pleasing to you? If there's anything in me that is, um, you know, causing disunity, if there's any jealousy, any envy, any bitterness, any hatred, anything in me that's creating a disunity amongst me and my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, and it is a brave prayer, but I believe actually God wants to reveal that stuff to us because he ultimately, our journey as Christians is to be more like Christ and to love one another and lay down our lives for one another. And really that is the ultimate sort of um, place of unity when you get a group of believers that consider others above themselves and and treat one another with love like in 1 Corinthians 13 where they're patient with each other and they're kind and they don't keep record of wrongs there's this unity that Jesus is at the center of everything we do everything we are the way we think the way we live the way we lay down our lives the way we surrender the way we take up our cross the way we live our lives in, in humility towards one another 
this is the essence of unity. It's not simply agreeing on what song we should sing on a Sunday. That surely that's a form of agreement, but that's not really the unity that you know God's talking about. Oh, let's all agree that we want to sing. You know, when I survey on a Sunday morning and we've got unity, that's not really what it's talking about. It's talking about a body of people who come together with Jesus at the absolute core and centre of who they are and decide that that's the way they want to live, loving one another like Christ loved the church, because that's how the world says, that's how um, the world will know that we're his disciples. So, you know, if there's anything that's stopping you loving your brothers and sisters like Christ loves your brothers and sisters that's creating disunity, then ask God to reveal that to you. It's a brave prayer and it can be an uncomfortable journey and correction and sitting down and saying sorry and praying for those people. But I encourage you to do that. I've not got very long this morning, so I can't go too much more into it. But I know there's loads of brothers and sisters in our church community who would love to share um, with you, help you, encourage you, inspire you, guide you on that journey. And if you acknowledge that, yeah, I've got some stuff in my heart I need to deal with. The second thing is to really pray um, for other people in our church community. And just to be really quick, I, I don't know, you know, if you're like me, but how often someone's sort of been sharing something with you, maybe they've uh, got trouble at work or financial difficulty, sickness, it could be a whole host of different needs or whatever. But you sort of have this token line where you say at the end, oh, I'll pray for you. Um, but actually then you never do. And then you see him again, you're like, oh, I didn't pray for him. So you say like this token prayer, like, oh God, I pray you'd bless him. And then you can, you know, clear your conscience that you prayed for them. But it's really a token gesture. It's really um, not much in it. But actually to go away and genuinely, sincerely pray for someone, to put your needs to one side, shelve them and say I'm going to seek the face of God for this person, I'm going to pray that they have an incredible breakthrough, I'm going to pray their finances are met, I'm going to pray they're blessed abundantly and do you know what's even more of a challenge when you find or, or realise someone that there's maybe a bit of disunity with, you, you're harbouring something against, when you start to pray those prayers of blessing over them, um, but that, that's just a whole different um, ball game so to speak of, of blessing when you start to live in that place where you genuinely praying for breakthrough for people you struggle with and I'm not just talking about people at work I'm talking about people in the body of Christ because ultimately God is trying to sort of sharpen us all up against each other as iron sharpens iron and bring us to a place of unity um, because we are one body and, and, and the Bible paints that brilliant picture of the body of Christ working together one body many parts so that's it really for today. I know it's been a bit of a whistle-stop tour of Psalm 133 and a bit of a whistle-stop tour of unity in that sense. But I just really want to encourage you to pray for yourself, to ask God, search me, oh God, show me if there's anything in my heart that's creating disunity and to really genuinely start praying for people that you're, you're talking to on Sundays and throughout the week as they're sharing the needs with you, to do whatever it is, whether it's reminders in your phone, stick post-its, on your computer or around the house, stick some stuff on your fridge. I don't know what it is that's gonna remind you to pray for people, but whatever it is, do it and genuinely, earnestly seek God for those people. And I honestly believe that those things will help us start to move forward and grow in unity as a body of um, believers, the body of Christ, brothers and sisters. Um, so yeah, be blessed today. Encourage someone, text someone, pray for someone. Have a great day and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.